the monuments are more or less my own idea and uh, why I uh, uh, did them the way I did, I really don't know myself. They are made from a metal pipe and uh, steel. I was inspired by the fact that uh, some of the atrocities were, were so profound and great, and uh, I thought that they should, people should be reminded of them. I find that, that after putting the monuments up, most people want to forget. They don't want to remember. They don't want to remember the Holocaust. They don't want to remember the fact that we conquered the Indians for no reason at all. That we just more or less took their ground for free and then, and then tried to exterminate them all. And now we're trying to make up for it in a lot of ways, you know, but it's too late. Too late. I feel that people just don't want to know about things that aren't, uh, you know, joyous or all that. They don't want to know about the sadness in life or anything. It's pretty hard to, for an average person to contemplate that you had six million people executed in, a, in something like a Holocaust in a period of just a short few years. Six million people is probably twice the size of Seattle or more. All, everybody. I mean, if you think about it, it's pretty hard. It's, pre it's, it's, it's pretty hard to resolve something like that. Up on the very top of the Holocaust Monument is about an eight-foot uh, section that's enclosed in glass, and then there's artificial flame up there with bulbs and uh, linen that's blown around from the, you know, and that creates the f flame effect. And it's very, I've never been there myself at night, but it's uh, very authentic, they tell me. A good portion of this stuff is lost. People who want to go out on the highway and see a, a, a yellow flag flying half-mast, knowing that this represents 17,000 people that are going to get killed every year from drunken drivers. Drunk, they, don't want to, they, they don't want that in their mind when they're traveling. I mean, they, they, because for, for all they know, they could be one of them. I was going to put up this one monument about 100 feet or so with a yellow flag half mast, and I was denied the permit, so I put up just on a regular flagpole. The main theme was uh, to honor Mother Teresa. You know, Christ the Redeemer is on top, and she's down in the bottom deck. And I, I was going to dedicate it in honor of Mother Teresa. And then I uh, realized that there were many Mother Teresas out there and that I should have uh, uh, dedicated the monument to all nuns living or, or deceased, foreign or American. And that's probably in the end what I will do. I'll dedicate that to the nuns. Yeah. I chose Chief Seattle because I needed uh, some monument to honor the Indians, and uh, I was quite impressed with Chief Seattle. I, he, he was, uh, Chief Seattle tried to uh, get along, I think, with everybody, you know, and he was a negotiator, peace and all that. Well, uh, I think he was, he, he was a peace-loving man. He was a peace-loving man. It's a little bit confusing now for a lot of people that go by these monuments because they don't know what they represent, but the highway department doesn't want any signs on the monuments that's readable from the highway. So that's more or less the reason that monuments aren't identified. I went for a, to, to get another permit for three more, I guess, well, then they, they turned me down. Yeah. The highway department is not too happy with them because they figure it uh, causes uh, visual distraction. The way I look at it on I-5, everything can be a distraction. There's all kinds of distractions there, but uh, they claim this was a little too much. <laughs> if it was to be done over again, they would have denied me the permits, I'm sure. Some think it's the worst thing they ever saw, and of course, uh, they either like it or they don't like it. <laughs>